I just want to be clear uh, why I've gone to this much trouble to do this. In order to use a, um, a ram press, the clay has to be really, really plastic because you're pressing the clay over a form under pressure. If the clay is short and not plastic in any way, it's going to crack and your piece is not going to be successful. So anybody that uses a, a pressing application understands this. In production, you'd be using a filter press. And a filter press, you'd mix your clay in a blunger and get it really, really wet so that all the little flat clay particles were wet. And then you would dewater it, and then you would run it through a pug mill and dry it out make it homogenous. So what I'm doing here, this is a test apparatus. So this will make about 30 or 35 pounds of plastic clay. Uh, one, one of my 16 inch sinks takes about 22 pounds. So this is more than enough to press, press a sink. Uh, so this takes a standard formula that I've developed and it processes it in a way that it is optimally plastic so that I can actually accurately test it in the pug mill before I do a production batch of a uh, thousand pounds of the clay. So <clears throat> this is the reason I'm gone to this much trouble to do this. Otherwise you'd have to mix the clay and let it sit around for a year and then you could use it. Well that's not very efficient way to do it. So what I have to do now is I have to figure out how to get this off without again dumping it all on the floor. And then I have to pick it up and put it on the table. And so I do this with a little bit of concern. So if I loosen one here and then I get a hold of the bag and then I I want to be careful when I loosen the other that the top doesn't dump out on me. And it's a little bit heavy because it's got a lot of water and a lot of clay in it. But then I have to straighten this out so I can get the clamp on it. And so here's the clamp apparatus. So as long as the, the slip is all run to the bottom of the bag, so if I grab this in the middle and I sort of center that, and I'm going to squeeze really hard on this, that gets that started. And I'll squeeze that down. And I sort of progressively work from one end to the other. So theoretically that's sealed. And this doesn't look very strong, but it actually is quite strong. And you can see from the floor that some water is just running right through there. There's no pressure and the water's dripping out, but you see this is water coming out, not clay. So now what I have to do is I have to figure out how to get it in here. So <clears throat> what I want to do is prop this bag open and then progressively slide it inside. So this works best if you have it on a table. So you can see when this is pressed flat, clay runs, seeks its own level like water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the bag up and then I have to, I have to coax it inside the bag. And I have to pull this toward me as I get more room to work. And I suppose I could take a stick and poke the stick on there. You'd want to be careful if you poke the stick on there to get it in there that you didn't pull this off and then all your slip would come out. So this is a little uh, inefficient 
to get it in there, but the idea is to get that the far end down down the other side of it. Yeah, I think a stick will work. So this is the third seal that I'm going to use to seal the bag. So this is just a piece of plastic pipe. I'm going to use that pipe to see if I can't push that down. And there's another way to do this. If I pull this forward, that's probably the easiest way. So I can just use the weight of the thing to push it down. So forget all of that. That's not the way to do it. Developing a process to do something like this is inevitably trial and error. And if your memory is good, you remember how you did it that worked. My memory is not always very good. So you see now, this whole mass of slip will sink its own level there. So now we can take this, and this, this bag has some snaps. These snaps don't work particularly well, but the idea is if you snap, snap that, and snap that, then basically you run the tube through the snapped parts. Uh, the snap is not particularly significant. It's a bit of a bone doggle, so you take this and you put it around there in the same way that we did on the other seal. So that snaps on, you just have to progressively work your way down this thing. Okay, so that bag is airtight. The seals on the filter bag material seal that bag so the slip can't come out and the weave of the fabric is designed such that the water is going to come out of there. So what we're going to do here is we're going to turn this a little bit around. And what I want is I want it sort of hanging over the end here. And I want the bag toward the far end. And then I'm going to put something to create a downward angle, like so. Uh, water responds to gravity, so I got all these grooves, and on the back side of this, the water is going to get sucked out. We're going to put this under um, vacuum pressure. I'm going to put it right in here. And to get a better detail on this, this is simply a, a hose fitting that has been turned off smooth. So it's got a hose barb in here. This is ordinary uh, compressor hose, which you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's or any place like that. This is a plug. So just to demonstrate how this goes in, it goes in here the same way it goes in. This is vulcanized onto here, and so that just simply presses in. Once this goes under vacuum, it'll seal itself really tight. So that's just a demonstration. It goes in down here the same way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a spring clamp and I'm going to put there and that's a little bit of a tension relief thing on this I don't want to twist it too much something like that just a little bit in the way here but not too much 
I'm going to take this prop stick out temporarily because what I want to do is I want that slip to be a uniform layer. So I want to, as much as I can, have a uniform thickness. And then I'm going to turn on my vacuum pump. <laughs> so <clears throat> what I've got here and I have to be careful that I don't overdo it what I've got here is this is the vacuum line over my head that's going to my vacuum uh, bag and I don't have it on full vacuum yet and this is a uh, commercial heavy-duty home uh, water filter housing. Uh, so you buy these at Home Depot or Lowe's or someplace like that, and they come with a filter, and people use them to filter their water if their well water or something is, is dirty. So I don't use the filter. What I'm doing is I'm running the vacuum line through the top of this, and what that does is it decants the water off. Well, when I first pull it, I'm pulling a lot of air out of there, and so the air makes all these bubbles. So periodically I have to bleed this and take the water off. So some of this is a little time consuming, but it's the kind of thing you can set up and you can get it going, you can go off and do something else. 